<laughs> Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's me again, Insane Gorilla. Welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a double whammy of sorts. Now, this is going to be a read of what is Bell was the son of a warden slash peacekeeper. Now, if you know why, I did ask if you wanted this to be a redo, and I have done it for you guys. So, let's get this over with, shall we? We start off with a basket floating down the stream of a river. With the river bringing it to a small grass wasteland. Well, not a wasteland. More like a grassy invert in the river. Where, well, where the river meets the largest part of a lake, and this basket, well, something moves within the basket. Hang on a minute. This man with black hair walks past the river. He hears some a noise of cries as he twitches his ears as he hears it. All he can hear is wah, wah, wah of an infant. So he walks closer, closer, and closer. All he hears is wah, 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 as it gets louder and louder. Then, feeling distress wash over him, he runs. As he runs and runs and runs, Hearing the crying getting louder, then softer, then louder again. Eventually he nails it down as he rustles some foliage out of the way. As he hits the water, as he hears the wah, wah. As he then looks down to see a basket with a small child in it. The child is crying, pale. Well, crying and is very pale. Of him grabbing hold of the basket, bringing it to shore, taking the baby that he finds out of its watery grave as he wraps it up in an extra linen that he has. As it warm, as he tries his best to warm the infant up, as he then feels the child's forehead, as he notices that the child stopped crying, as he put two fingers up to its neck, as he could feel a small pulse, as he then checks to see if he's breathing. While the child is breathing, him realizing, eyes, eyes widening as the child stopped breathing. As he immediately got into protective mode, we put two fingers above the child's chest, started pushing, and then Breathing into the child's, well, breathing into the child's mouth to try and get the child to breathe. As he continues, what feels like hours, as you then see the child's arms move, as he would start hearing the cries again, as it will throw out water from its mouth all over the floor 
with the man sighing, a happy sigh, as he would just say, well, you are going to be an interesting one. No guarantee about that. You are super interesting. As he grabs hold of the child and well, sort of makes a holder for him. As he figures out that he has a baby boy in his hands. As he walks off, saying, You're coming to live with me. I will raise you as my own son. I wonder what to call you, though. I know. I know damn well what I'll call you. I'll call you Belle Cronell. Considering my last name is Cronell, I'll call you Belle Cronell. You'll know me as father. No doubt about it. As he walks into a house. As he shouts, Honey, I'm home. As a woman with yellow hair, like eyes, walks down. With the same ears as him, Bobsy, yellow. Or blonde, I should really be saying. As she says, ah, hello, honey. You're finally back. How's the trip? Yeah, it's all right. The adventurers are the adventurers. How's the god? Ah, she's good. She's always good to you. She's never good to anybody else. I was her first familiar member. What do you expect? I don't know. Favoritism. Yeah, I know. Anyway. How are you doing, my love? As she would smile, saying, We're doing good. And she would rub her belly. As she would look down to see her rubbing her belly. As he would put his ears up to her, to her belly, saying, Hello there, little one. Hope you can hear me in there. As she would laugh, saying, She can't hear you in there. <laughs> Not yet. She must probably feel your presence, but... She can't exactly speak to you through my belly. <laughs> Nothing but a mother's love. As he would stand up and kiss her. As she would feel something rustle within his, well, coat. As she would back off saying, what have you got in your coat? As he would go, ah oh, yes, meet our newest addition to the family, Belle Cornell. As she would look at him saying to herself, what? Have you been cheating on me? As he would pull little Belle Cornell out of his coat, saying, I found this little guy on the river a few miles away from here, soaking wet. When I pulled him out, dried him off, I noticed that his breathing had shallowed. So I put, took his pulse, it was very shallow as well. Then I realised that he actually had stopped breathing. So, I decided I'm not letting an infant, ch an infant who has not seen life, die here. So, I adopted him. After saving his life, no way in hell am I putting him in an orphanage. Because orphanages these days don't really have the best attendances to uh, being very good. Apart from that one in... Orario, which still is hanging on, luckily. 
As he would look at his wife, she would say, he, he was in a river. Yes. As he would hold out the basket with the white towels and that in it, saying, that's what he was in. He, yep, baby boy, I want to, we're adopting him because it'll be best to have another pair of legs running around here. We just need to get a maid who knows the birth dates of children to turn up so we know when his birthday is. Right. You know, I can do that, right? I know, but I don't want you wasting your magic or your mana or arcanum. Which one do you prefer? <sighs> Mystic arts. Mystic arts, okay then. Fair. I don't want you wasting too much mystic art, as you call it. Thanks for the concern, hon, but I'm a strong lady, you know. I can handle it. I am bearing our first, well, second this time, child. <laughs> anyway, let's take a good look at the charming young little one, shall we? Sure. As she casts a spell to find out what age he is, as she would gasp, saying, along with him, saying, God, only, oh God, four hours old, he should be with his parents. Do his parents want to kill him or something? I don't think, I don't know. Was there anything else in that basket? Don't know. Here, hold on to him for a bit. Sure, I, I'm going to sit on the couch. Fine. As he would go to the basket, as he would rummage through it, even though it's all pretty damp, he eventually finds something wrapped up in leather and is very securely sealed so water doesn't get into it as he would say what's this catching his wife's interest as he would see it as he would open it as he would see a letter with a red stamp with a crown on it like a crowned stamp. A stamp with a crown in the middle. Sorry. As he would be curious, saying, What? As he would show the stamp to his wife, as she would gasp, saying, Does this mean we're holding royalty? No, it can't be possible that we're holding royalty. Read it. Re read it. Read it. See what it, ha see what it says. Sure. I don't like delving into personal matters, but for him, we're going to have to. Yes. As he would read it, saying, Dear whoever you are who has found our son, I'm, I hope this you find this letter. I hope you treat my son with the greatest of respect I am someone known as peacekeeper in a faraway land I am on the run I along with my husband and a hundred or so of my brothers and sisters 50 of each including myself and my husband which makes 102 we are all on the run. I am the boy's mother. I I hope whoever you are you find him and you look after him. But whatever you do don't tell him about his heritage. I am the former queen of a land along with my husband who is a former king. 
we used to be a king and queen of an empire. So you could say we're an emperor and empress. But... But... But, but we managed... We were... We were usurped. We were usurped by... My oldest friend and ally. She believed I was not a true empress. An empress who rules, who should be ruling with fear and not love and kindness. I don't expect... Seriously? I, I don't expect any of you to agree saying an empress should always rule with fear. The more feared the empress, the better the people will acknowledge you. But I do not agree. I'm the empress of a kingdom, of an empire. I do not rule through fear. I rule through peace. I had an order of wardens and peacekeepers, which I am one myself, because I trained myself in the peacekeeper way. My husband, who was a warden, we both loved our people. We both wanted peace. My friend, his sister, betrayed us both. I wrote this letter in haste. I only gave birth to my son. Well, whoever finds this an hour ago. I don't know if you've, if he's dead or alive now, but if he is alive, please make sure he stays alive. Never tell him of his heritage. Because if you do, he may break. He is a fragile soul. To me, the greatest dishonor a mother could ever do was abandon their child, or is abandon their child. My husband says that it's not fair that we must abandon him, that he should be living in peace and in happiness. Tell my son Tell, tell Anu that his mother loves him very much. Tell him that his mother loves him very much and will always wish to be with him. But for his own safety, I must, I must send him away. It's not because I don't love him, it's because I love him too much. So please, I beg you, if anybody has ever seen him, has anybody, has ever got him and seen this letter, please treat him with the utmost respect, but treat him like a child, one that must learn. Because if he does not learn and believes himself to be all superior, he will find out that he will lose everything that we have. There's another letter after this one. Please read it. P.S. Empress Astina. Empress Astina. Wait. Empress Astina? Isn't she the... Yes. The Empress of the Rising... of the Rising Sun. She's... She's her son. But there's no letter after this, so I better read it. Please do. Here we go. To anyone reading this letter, this is the Emperor of the Rising Sun. Like my wife must probably never told, 
told in her other in her letter. I am the Emperor of the Rising Sun, along with my wife, the Empress of the Rising Sun. I know this is rude and not that. I'm not much of a people person, nor am I one for fancy letters like this. But I'll go with my insecurities to write this letter. Please, if you have found our son, protect him at all costs. Protect him like he was your own child. I am... Well... I am an emperor. I am an emperor of a... Well, a former emperor, along with my wife. But we want nothing more for, than our son to be safe. No matter how hard it pains me not to be with him, I need him to be safe. I need him to be secure. If you're all reading this, then that means you've found him, dead or alive. But if, if he's alive, then please protect him. If he's dead, then there was nothing you could have done to save him. I understand that. But if he's alive, please, 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 I am begging you from the bottom of my heart and from the pit of my stomach. Save him. Protect him. I am the warden. Like my wife most probably said in her message, she is a peacekeeper. A warden is self-explanatory. You don't need to know that much. We are, like, we are opposite to our sisters. We all treat each other like brothers and sisters here, in the in the wardens and in the peacekeepers. I have given instructions on him how to learn our ways, both ways, without my wife knowing. I am from originally from Arario when I left it with my parents. We went over to. The Rising Sun, that's where I met my wife for the first time. She was the heiress to the king, to the, to the Empire. We were both very young. We, well, hit it off on the first go was would be an understatement. We, we never liked each other until we fought one another, then mutual respect slowly turned into friendship and slowly spl blossomed into something more. I was 15, she was 15, although my birthday was a day before hers. Still technically made me older than her. By day. We both We both loved our people, although my sister thought that we should be ruling with fear. She disagreed with the Empress on multiple occasions. I often had to break up their fights. Eventually, when I heard that I was getting married to the Empress, I thought I couldn't do it. Everybody saw it on my face when we got married. Then I slowly became one of my own people. I dedicated myself to training and to meetings. I, I tried my best. I made mistakes here and there with the Empress. None of us are perfect. And then the coup d'etat happened. Five years of peace and then the coup d'etat. An hour later, my wife gave birth to our son. We came to this land when the coup d'etat literally happened. All of our people turned on us. Fifty people stuck with us as we all fled. We caused as much damage to our former army as we could. 
My wife couldn't move, so, but she was making a note. So was I. We both made one. The coup d'etat is still going on. But you know, my wife and I can't go back. Because our former ally, our former people, turned on us. They go by the name of the Blackstones. The Wardens and Peacekeepers are known as the Guardians of Light. Considering we serve the gods on our homeland. We came here to investigate some suspicious rumours of an army being brewed being gathered to create a beachhead on our own turf, our own homeland. So we came here to investigate to see if this, see if it was true. And like I said, the coup d'etat happened. We were both usurped. So we left. I heard my sister's name being chanted as the new empress. I can only imagine what damage she has done already. All the loyalists towards us are most probably executed, tortured, strung up. If they are still loyal to us, it is. I haven't seen any come near us. My only suspicion is that they are all traitors, even the ones near us. But if they were traitors, they would have tried to kill us already. So please, train my son. Train our son. Protect him. Teach him. Teach him how to fight. Do anything you can to protect. I do not want to see my own son die. If I ever get to see him again. But when the timing is right. And I know my wife will disagree with me fully on this. But when the timing is right. Please. I beg you. Tell him about his heritage. Tell him who he really is. Please. I beg you. This is the Emperor signing off. But please, protect my son. Oh God. So we are holding the heir to the throne of an empire. Indeed we are. What's his birthday? It's the 10th of the 11th. Right. We must protect him at all costs. I agree. As well, they begin training him. As well. Somebody in armor with, well, nine or a hundred other people walk behind him. One hundred and one other people walk behind him. My liege. Yes, I know. I do not believe leaving your son behind was a good choice. Oh? By the way, he is actually the 101 person. Sir, I don't mean to be rude, but... Speak. But do you really think trying to take back the capital is a good idea? we got to try something. I know, but... I so sincerely thought you would want to be with your son. Trust me, I'd love to be with him by now. Then why don't you go back to him? I can't. You can. I can't, woman. My wife killed by an arrow. Me getting wounded. If I go back there, I will not be able to face my son. I will fight, and I will die on the field of battle. To take back his, my, and my wife's empire. 
from my traitorous cur of a sister. Yes, my liege. If you want to leave, do it. I do not want to stop you. Live your lives. I'll do it alone if I must. All hail the Emperor. All hail the Empress. Not the traitorous cur of my sister. Yes, my liege. Who with has my son? Because I can feel it. Please protect him. My liege? Ignore me. Let's move. Yes, my liege. And that is actually where I'm ending it off, guys. Sorry it's shorter than my usual ones. It's because I'm actually running it... Because I actually had a few good ideas that I wanted to do. But I couldn't really be putting it into perspective. Because I didn't know how bad it will end up to be. So please comment down below what you think of this video. And if it's actually good. Yay. If it's bad, let me know so I'll redo it. Peace.